Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us. I'm being joined by Joshua, who is the Administrative and Operations Supervisor for Enchanted Expeditions. He's going to be talking to us today about the, Enchant the, the itineraries that they run at Enchanted Expeditions and what makes them stand out. I know there's a lot of itineraries and companies out there offering the Galapagos. So Joshua is going to explain to you what um, makes our itineraries so special. But before we get to that, I'm going to take a quick minute to introduce our portfolio to you. So uh, my name's Jenna and I work for Emerging Destinations. We represent cool companies and cool places. And today, of course, we're talking about Enchanted Expeditions who offer the Galapagos tours in addition to mainland Ecuador. So they do also have, um, they provide DMC services for mainland. So if you do ever have a client interested in the Galap Galapagos, we absolutely encourage you to also spend a few days on the mainland as well. Uh, we do have a lot of clients you can see up there on the slide, so I'm not going to introduce them all to you, but I will introduce our South American portfolio to you since we're talking about Ecuador today. Uh, we also represent Grand Hotels Lux. They have properties in Uruguay and Argentina. Uh, Las Torres Patagonia, they are offering um, hiking tours and in addition to a hotel in Cerro del Paine National Park in Chile. Um, we have Travel Pioneers, they are a boutique DMC in Costa Rica. And two new additions to our uh, South American portfolio, we also have Chile Concept and Colombian Journeys. So if you have any questions about any of the clients that you see up there on your screen, uh, we also have an extensive South, um, rather um, African portfolio and a small ship polar cruising as well. So if you have any questions about any of those, please feel free to reach out to me. If you want to uh, set up a private training for you and your team, or you want some digital materials, brochures, that sort of thing, please do not hesitate to reach out. A couple of housekeeping items to go over before we get started. This webinar will be recorded, so I will be sending the recording out to everybody um, by tomorrow. Also, we do post all of our webinars on our Emerging Destinations YouTube channel and on our Emerging Destinations website. So if you do want to view any of our previous webinars, you can find them on there. But don't worry, this webinar will be recorded and I will be sending that out to you. So if you do have to answer a call or step away for a moment, don't worry. And lastly, we would love if you uh, for you to participate. So using the GoToWebinar control panel, there's an option for you to type through a question or a comment. So you can do so throughout Joshua's presentation. Um, at the end, we will do a quick Q&A. So we will try to get to as many of those questions as we can. But if we do not answer um, all of them, we will make sure that they are sent out to you in a document in the webinar follow-up. So we will try to answer as many as possible, um, time permitting. So I think that's all I have um, from me. I will pass things over to Joshua. Well, uh, first of all, thank you everyone for uh, joining um, and uh, let's get this going. Um, I, yeah, and thank you firstly to Emerging uh, Destinations and Jenna for having me and giving me the opportunity to share our Galapagos itineraries. Um, first of all, I'm Joshua Angermeyer. I was born in Ecuador and raised in Galapagos. I grew up in the tourism industry in, in Galapagos, and I've been working with Enchanted Expeditions for about six years. Uh, and before we get into the itineraries, I wanted to just talk a little bit about Enchanted Expeditions. Uh, we are a DMC in Ecuador and Galapagos, but we also own two boats and one lodge in Galapagos. We are a family business. I was started by my mom. She was a guide and with other business partners uh, who are also guides and nature enthusiasts. We've been doing um, tours in Galapagos for over 40 years, and we've been uh, running tours in mainland Ecuador for over 30 years now. Um, and I just wanted to 
tell you a little bit about our products. Um, we Our two boats in Galapagos are the Cachalote Explorer and the Beluga. Now, they have the same itineraries. They both start on the same day. Um, they both have 16 passenger vessels, so pretty much the same, except uh, the cabins are slightly different, and that's expressed uh, through the cost of them. But I will, through this presentation, be showing you the Cachalote Explorer itineraries, but the Beluga ones are the same. Um, we also have a lodge in the, in Santa Cruz on one of the islands in Galapagos, and I'll speak a little bit about the lodge later on and how it ties into the boat itineraries. Uh, and I'll also just introduce uh, the Galapagos Islands for people who don't know. Um, there are 15 major islands. Um, they are 600 miles away from the mainland, which is quite far. Um, most of the islands are national park and it has a very big uh, marine reserve of 51,000 square miles. There are two, um, two airports that uh, you can fly into from the mainland. The, the main one is Baltra. The second one is in uh, San Cristobal in, in uh, Puerto Vacarizo Moreno. Um, I mentioned this because for our shortened itinerary, you can fly in here, but our tours start in Baltra. And I also just wanted to tell you a little bit about um, the geology of Galapagos and why how this affects the itineraries. Uh, the currents are coming in from the, the south uh, west. And you can see along this ridge right here that there it goes from very deep water to, to shallow waters. And this brings up the, the cold water from the seabed all the way up to the surface. And it causes um, abundance of sea life it really had filled with nutrients and, and this affects the western islands a lot when it comes to the sea life of it. Um, as well, the islands are over a hot spot which is give or take about here and causing these islands to still be active and volcanic. volcanic. Um, the islands are slowly moving eastward, so the islands out here are older and the volcanoes are not active anymore. Now this makes for different animals and different places because uh, they are older with more vegetation. Moving on, I'll just explain a little bit about a typical day. This is um, just a very uh, simple version of, of what you actually do. But uh, most days are like this. Uh, you get up early and you get to shore. Now, you want to get to shore early because you are on the equator. It gets very hot and the animals are more active in the early mornings and in the afternoon. So this is the reason for getting up early, get to shore, get to see the animals before they're, they're hiding in the shade. Um, when you get back to the boat around 10 o'clock, you will um, get geared up for your first snorkel. And a lot, of the, a lot of times people ask about the snorkeling. Every day you will snorkel and sometimes you will snorkel twice. So at around 10 o'clock, you'll gear up for your first snorkel of the day, go out, enjoy the, the sea life, come back, have lunch on the boat around noon, and then the boat will move to its second site. This, depending how close it is, can be anywhere from half an hour to a few hours. And at this time, a lot of people will take a nap, they'll relax, look for sea life like whales and dolphins. It's great when the dolphins are riding the bow of the boat. Um, and then you will get to your second site. Around um, 
four in the afternoon, depending on whether you do a snorkel or not, you will head then back to shore for your second shore visit. Uh, there again, it's, it's all about getting there a little later because the animals will become active again as, the, as it cools down. The park closes at sunset, so you return to the boat where you will have dinner. And then every evening at around 8 p.m., we have a debriefing and a briefing. You'll go over with the guide what you saw. If you had any questions, people will show off their pictures, and then you will go over what you will be doing the next day. Um, this is pretty much every single day for the whole week. Um, here is just a quick overview of our two itineraries, our two eight-day itineraries. You have uh, Fernandina, named after the island of Fernandina. And as you can see, you head over into this colder water region. And Tower, which is named after the island up here. As you can see, it does have, most of the islands have two names. This is because um, before Ecuador, before the islands belonged to Ecuador, they all had English names. And then eventually, Galapagos became part of Ecuador and all the names were changed to Spanish. And just a quick uh, note to everyone, all, all boats in Galapagos have two week itineraries or two itineraries that are a week long and, and this was done by the national park to kind of spread the load out because there are you know a handful of great sites and they didn't want to have all the boats always week after week going there so they've spread it out and this is one of the reasons that we feel that our itineraries are better because with the experience that we have, we were able to choose two very good itineraries that really highlight everything about the islands. Um, we also have uh, six day itineraries, which are just shortened versions of the eight days. So instead of starting in Baltra, you start in the Amin and you just do the second half of the trip. You will have to take a speed boat from Puerto Vallarta over to Villamil. Villamil is a very cute little town that has a beautiful white sand beach. So oftentimes people like to get there a few days early, relax in the town there, and then start the trip from Isabela. On the other side with our hood itinerary, it's just a shortened version of the tower one where Instead of starting in Baltra there again, you start in Puerto Vaquerizo Moreno and you do the second half. More in detail with the Fernandina itinerary, um, it covers the, as you can see, the Western and Central Islands. You'll be able to go to Sombrero Chino, which is a beautiful little island, and see penguins, go to Ravida, and see, um, see flamingos in the lagoon in the back and a red sand beach, and go to Villamil, see the town, go to Sierra Negra, which is uh, the second largest crater in the world. It's absolutely spectacular. Um, and then go up into this channel, which, which you will see a lot of whales and dolphins. There's a, also geologically, there's an uplift in Urbina Bay. Very interesting to see the, the seabed was lifted right out of the water uh, about 60 years ago. So you can see coral heads and, and get to Punta Espinosa, see the penguins and the cormorants. And, and come around in Puerto Vegas, where there used to be a settlement, a human settlement there, and, and you can see the fur seals, and, and Bartolome, where you see the iconic uh, uh, pinnacle rock that you see all the photos. Um, the highlights are, are Punta Espinosa, Sierra Negra, and Bartolome. 
as I mentioned before, the six day uh, shortened version starts in via mail, so you will have to get there via a speedboat. Uh, the central islands, as I mentioned, are geologically older islands, so you find uh, more lagoons, uh, more vegetation and, 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 and beaches, and this is all just caused by erosion. And the animals that you will see are the sea lion, the tortoises, the fur seals, finches, penguins, frigates, flamingos, blue-footed boobies, sharks, rays, and so much more. It's, it's, it's packed with animals, and this is every site. I mean, it's not just um, one. And then off into the western islands like Fernandina and Isabela, they are younger islands. You can see the, the lava rock. Um, and these are active volcanoes. If you are lucky, you will actually see an eruption. The waters are colder, so the sea life is, is just a little more abundant. Um, as I mentioned before, this is where you can see the whales and the dolphins and the flightless cormorant with a beautiful blue eye. You only see that in the Western Islands. The tower itinerary um, covers more of the central, but also covers uh, Genovesa and Española. These are two very, very good spots. And, and, um, sorry. and you also get the opportunity to go to Post Office Bay in Floriana. Floriana is the first humans that settled in Galapagos settled on Floriana. So it has a rich uh, human history to it and Post Office Bay being one of the spots. And, um, very neat, very unique. Uh, and like I mentioned before, if you do a shortened version, it starts in Puerto Vaquerizo Moreno and you just start from there and you can take a speedboat from Puerto Ayora or you can fly into Puerto Vaquerizo Moreno because it does have an airport that goes to the mainland. Uh, the southeastern islands uh, are the oldest. Um, established vegetation because of this, you, you get lots of um, animals that need the vegetation like the tortoises and, and the iguanas, the land iguanas. And, and you also get the, the towns because people are the same, they need that vegetation, right? So you get the largest towns, Puerto Ayora and Puerto Bacariso Moreno. And um, the animals that you will see in these islands are the land iguanas, the frigates, the blue-footed boobies, Nazca boobies, marine iguanas, and a sought after the albatross. Uh, the albatross only nest on Española Island. I'll just flip back here. So they only nest on Española. And in, in Punta Suarez is where you go to see the waved albatross and see them doing their courting dance and nesting but you can only see them from april to december so if this is important for someone then obviously they would have to go within these dates and then you have tower island which is right up north it's the northernmost island that that human that visitors can go on land. There are other islands that you can go diving further north. The, this is the furthest moat that, that you can go on shore. Geologically, it's very unique. You get to anchor inside of a crater. Um, and this is a great place for bird wildlife. Uh, you'll see red-footed boobies, frigates, Nazca boobies, short-eared owl, with swallowtail gulls, red-billed tropic birds. And there's also a site that we go snorkeling where you often see hammerhead sharks for those who want to see one. The key differences, um, the, the Western Islands have a little more sea life. I've mentioned this already. This, you know, if you're into a little more into like 
making sure you see whales and dolphins, then you, you probably want to do the Fernandina itinerary. And you get to hike the iconic uh, Bartolome uh, mountain and, and get that iconic picture of Pinnacle Rock with the two beaches and also the flightless cormorant. You can only see that in the Western Island. The tower itinerary uh, visits Española and, and Genovesa, which are spectacular. And, and it's a little more, you see a little more variation in the bird wildlife. And you also get to see the, the albatross and post office bay. But more importantly are the similarities I find because most animals will be seen in both itineraries. So, and the experience is, is almost identical in your day to day. And as I mentioned, the typical day where you get up and you do a site and you go for a snorkel. This is the same on both itineraries. The distances covered are very similar. We use the same guides, crew, cooks, captains in both itineraries. The cost is the same. And if someone's not sure what they want to see, then it, it's really the, you know, it doesn't matter what week they go. Uh, our itineraries are always. Uh, one after another like flipping back and forth so oftentimes it's just people have certain dates that they need to uh um that they've gotten for holidays so the overall experience as i mentioned is the same uh and then just touching on our guides um you know the the owners through the owners are were guides guides to us are what make or break a trip. Um, we are extremely proud of the guides we use. Uh, and this, regardless of what itinerary you're on, it's all about the guide and their knowledge. And we know this, and so we seek out the best. And the experience on a 16 passenger vessel is there again it's not always about the itinerary but being in that intimate exclusive experience um, and being able to experience it from the boat in a dinghy snorkeling with this small group a small family you could say um, you know whenever i do a trip i i make great friends because I'm spending my day with these other 15 other people and I, you know, and you end up making lifelong friends and it's for anybody, you know, like we've had eight year olds and we've had toddlers, you know, it's just Galapagos is for everyone. Um, just swinging back to the lodge, um, because the itinerary to add on to the itinerary especially when you do the shortened versions of six days and you need to stay in town we recommend staying up at the lodge or if if you want an extra day or two to experience life in the town in in um in puerto Ayora, um and and do everything that the island has to offer when it comes to more of the human side of things and going to restaurants and experiencing the local life. Um, a great place to do it from is from uh, the Enchanted Galapagos Lodge. We have 10 rooms, we do farm to table experiences. You can see the pool is amazing. We have a cheese factory on the farm um we do uh we've done lots of yoga um, yoga trips where people they come as a group with their own yoga teacher it's just a great place to add on to the whole galapagos experience and add on to um one of the yachts and their itineraries and some of the things that you can add on to to the week and when you stay in town you can go see the fish market you can visit the coffee plantations and enjoy some cheese tasting and eat out and support the local economy 
um, do a bit of biking and hiking and go for a beach day or, or go for a dive trip. It's, I think, very important nowadays to not only stick to the regular itinerary of hopping onto the boat and doing a week and then leaving, I think it's important to stay in town and and leave those tourism dollars in, into smaller hands and into the, the restaurants and, you know, the artisanal fishermen. And, you know, this is, I think, very important, especially nowadays. Um, and, yeah. I just want to thank you, everybody, for joining me and and joining the Galapagos experience. <laughs> and uh, thank you all for listening. And thank you, Emerging Destinations, for having me and giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit about our, our itineraries. And yeah, I guess we'll move Here's on to some questions. Now. Some questions. Yeah, thanks so much, Joshua. There's still some things um, that I didn't know that I learned today. So thank you so much for that presentation. Um, just so everybody does know, we will be recording this. So if you do need to pop out, we will send the recording out to you um, before the end of the week here. Um, now would be a good time if you have any questions to type those through to us. Uh, we do have a few already in here and it looks like we're getting more. So um, I'll, we'll definitely do our best to see what we can get through here. Um, the first question is, when is the best time to go to the Galapagos? Uh, yeah, that's a, a, a great question. A lot of people do ask me that. Um, what well, all year is what I say because uh, different seasons, there are different animals that you will see that are breeding. And some people, it's important to see the, the a baby mascot booby or others. It's, you know, I want to see the albatross. Um, so when it comes to the animals, it's it's all year. When it comes to weather, if if that's important, then then December to May is the warmer season. Uh, you'll get warmer waters and you will get uh, more sunshine. From from June to November, the water cools down. You so you get colder water. Uh, it's a little more overcast but uh, the waters cool down because of that, you get a little more sea life and there's a little more activity in the animals. So it's a bit what you're looking for. So I um, hope I could <laughs> answer yeah. your question. To kind of build on that a little bit, uh, we have a couple of people asking about um, seasickness and which itinerary would be better, um, more calm, if you will. Uh, if sea sickness is a, an important thing, it's not so much what itinerary, but what time of year. So I would go for the warmer season. Uh, the seas are a little calmer. So in that range from December to May, the seas are a little calmer. And I have another question. So a couple different people have asked this as well, just in terms about um, either chartering a boat or a full buyout and then one person also inquired about if they can do a custom itinerary um custom itineraries are possible right now quite easily um because uh tourism is low right now but custom itineraries when times are normal it's a little more complicated there is a risk of the national park saying no to you because you have to apply for every single day and they can decide yes or no if you can go so it's it's quite challenging to do uh, uh special itineraries but right now they're okaying everything um and with the buyout, we right now we have a lot of promos with buyouts where we have special prices, whether you're two people or six people or you want to charter the whole boat for 16. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of specials right now, depending how many people are on board. Um, and yeah, that's just for the short term during these uh, difficult times. 
I actually, I will include a document in the webinar follow up that has all of those special charter rates. So if you are interested in seeing those those promotions that we have on right now, I'll include that in the webinar follow up. So I know we had a couple people asking about the um, approximate costs, et cetera, for that. So we will send that out. Um, we'll do one or two here and then we'll wrap things up. Um, for someone who is keen to swim with sea turtles, do you recommend the Isabella itinerary or both suitable? Uh, they're both suitable. Um, it's the sea turtles, and I'm just trying to think. Uh, I think it's around December you really start to see them and they're mating and um, and but yeah, in the Western Islands, you will see uh, more more likely to see more sea turtles, but you do see them everywhere. I'm actually just going to do two more, I promise, and then we'll wrap up. So uh, we have a question here about a land option for people who are not good on the boat with daily excursions, etc. Uh, do you uh, have a recommendation for that? Or could you guys organize that, etc.? Yes, uh, we do what they call island hopping, and 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 we've done plenty of it. And yes, and especially you know with people who you know they have a hard time being on boats, and and yeah, we've organized all kinds of trips. And so you you stay in the one town, you do some of the local activities, and then if you want to, you can take a speedboat to another island and do some of the local activities there or you can fly there are these uh, small planes that you can fly from one uh, town to the other and we'll do one last question here um what is the current situation with the covid pandemic in the galapagos uh galapagos they were able to partner with pfizer and and they were donated uh uh, vaccinations. So um, all the residents in Galapagos got vaccinated in, in May, all um, and like really high coverage. So in the islands, they've experienced since then very, very few cases, I think only three in the last six months. Um, so yeah, they're, they're doing very well. And to get into the islands now, you need a vaccine and a negative PCR test. So th there's a lot of control to to make sure that, you know, there's no outbreak. So um, it is highly recommended as, you know, one of the safest places that you can go travel right now. Um, and this is because of the, you know, what they've been able to do. Yeah, I'll just mention that I was there at the end of June and it was, I mean, it all the protocols, everything that they had in place was better than it is in the US or Canada. So I was very, very impressed with um, all of the policies and procedures that they had in place in the Galapagos. It felt um, very secure in that sense. So um, on that note, I'm going, there's still a few questions we didn't get to, but as I mentioned, we will definitely um, answer those questions and we will send them to you in the webinar follow up. So if we didn't get to one of your questions, I know there's still so many coming through. So my apologies on that. Um, but thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And we will um, answer those and send the webinar follow up in the next day. So thank you, Joshua, so much for joining us as well and for giving us that wonderful presentation on the Galapagos. No problem. No problem. Thank you.